Today on the island of Greenland, as part of man's continuing efforts to master the secrets of survival in the Arctic, the United States Army has established an unprecedented nuclear-powered Arctic Research Center. During an April 2024 flyover of Greenland, NASA scientists made an incredible discovery, uncovering the remnants of a hidden city buried deep beneath the ice. We were looking for the bed of the ice, and out pops Camp Century, said Alex Gardner, a NASA cryospheric scientist. We didn't know what it was at first. Camp Century was a Cold War era US military base that today lies buried under 100 feet of the Greenland ice sheet. NASA's Chad Green, aboard a Gulfstream 3 aircraft, captured a striking radar image revealing the site. This eerie discovery is part of an effort to map Greenland's ice using advanced radar technology, though uncovering an abandoned base wasn't on the agenda. Built in 1959 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Camp Century once stretched across 21 underground tunnels spanning 9,800 feet. Camp Century was no ordinary base. Constructed in one of the planet's harshest climates, with temperatures plummeting to minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit and winds exceeding 120 miles per hour, the base housed 200 soldiers. Officially a research facility, it also concealed Project Iceworm, a covert plan to store nuclear missiles in ice tunnels for potential strikes on the Soviet Union. However, the dynamic and unstable ice made the project unworkable. By 1967, the base was decommissioned, leaving behind hazardous materials, including 47,000 gallons of radioactive waste. According to the Atomic Heritage Foundation, this waste and the remnants of Camp Century remain entombed beneath the ice. The secrets of Project Iceworm lay hidden for decades, only coming to light in January 1995 during an inquiry by the Danish Foreign Policy Institute. The investigation was prompted by Denmark's parliament after the release of previously classified information about the 1968 B-52 crash at Thule Air Base. This information contradicted earlier government claims, sparking questions about the history of nuclear weapons use and storage in Greenland. Revelations continued in 1997 when Denmark published documents detailing the U.S. Army's ice worm plans. The project, outlined in a 1960 report titled Strategic Value of the Greenland Ice Cap, proposed an expansive missile network buried beneath Greenland's ice sheets. If fully realized, it would span a staggering 52,000 square miles, an area three times the size of Denmark. The design called for launch complex floors to be buried 28 feet below the ice surface, with missile launchers housed even deeper. Clusters of launch centers, spaced four miles apart, would be interconnected by a network of tunnels. To keep the system operational and unpredictable, new tunnels were to be excavated annually. After five years, thousands of firing positions would be available, allowing the missiles to be continually rotated among them. The scale and ambition of Iceworm were breathtaking, but its full scope remained a secret until decades after it was quietly shelved. Camp Century was an ambitious Arctic subsurface camp constructed using cut and cover trenching. Its layout featured a network of parallel trenches housing various buildings and facilities. Designed for a lifespan of 10 years with proper maintenance, the camp was actively manned for five years and ultimately abandoned after eight. The camp's trenches, built in 1959, quickly succumbed to the relentless pressure of the ice. 
Within just four years, the vertical and horizontal compression pushed the trenches to their design limits, necessitating extensive snow trimming to keep them functional. The largest trench, covered by a steel arch, spanned an impressive 1,100 feet in length and stood 26 feet tall and wide. Maintenance and waste disposal presented ongoing challenges. Snow trimming was a constant necessity to preserve the structural integrity of the trenches. The camp's sewage system also proved problematic. A sump located 150 feet from the nearest building, initially lacked proper ventilation, leading to an overwhelming odor in nearby living quarters during the first year. Venting reduced the stench, but failed to address the underlying issue. By 1962, core samples revealed that liquid waste had spread up to 170 feet horizontally, exacerbating trench deformation and odor in areas housing sleeping quarters. Despite the challenges, Camp Century offered remarkable protection against the harsh Arctic elements. It boasted modern facilities, including bathrooms, dining areas, and medical support, along with prefabricated buildings neatly tucked into the trenches. The camp was well equipped, with vehicles and ample storage for fuel and food. The base also featured one of the first portable nuclear reactors, which powered the site, called the PM-2A. The army called the reactor portable, even at 330 tons, because it was built from pieces that can fit in a C-130 cargo plane. The PM-2A was the third child of a family of eight army reactors, several of them experiments in portable nuclear power. The early portable nuclear reactors were anything but success stories. The PM-3A, for example, affectionately or perhaps ironically nicknamed Nuki Poo, installed at the US Navy base in McMurdo Sound, Antarctica, this reactor left a troubling legacy. Over its 10-year lifespan, it suffered 438 malfunctions, including a cracked and leaking containment vessel that created a nuclear mess in one of the planet's most pristine environments. Then there was SL-1, a stationary low-power reactor located in Idaho. Its tragic history culminated in a catastrophic explosion during a routine refueling operation, killing all three men on duty and forever marking it as one of the darker chapters in reactor history. The SM-1 still quietly looms just 12 miles from the White House at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Originally built for $2 million, the reactor now faces a $68 million cleanup cost, a stark reminder of the long-term price of nuclear experiments. The ML-1, meanwhile, stood out as the only truly mobile reactor of its time, but for all the wrong reasons. Despite its ambitious design, it never really worked, leaving its promise of mobility and functionality unfulfilled. The PM-2A was built in 18 months. It arrived at Thule Air Force Base in Greenland in July 1960 and was dragged 138 miles across the ice sheet in pieces and then assembled at Camp Century. When the reactor went critical for the first time in October, the engineers turned it off immediately as it leaked neutrons. The army fashioned lead shields and built walls of 55-gallon drums filled with ice and sawdust, trying to protect the operators from radiation. The PM-2A reactor operated for just two years, providing fossil fuel-free power and heat, but at a dangerous cost. Along with energy, it produced an excess of stray neutrons, far more than was safe, and these rogue particles wreaked havoc. The relentless neutron bombardment gradually turned the reactor's steel pipes and vessel increasingly radioactive, creating long-term contamination risks. 
Even the snow around the site wasn't spared, with traces of radioactive sodium appearing in the pristine Arctic environment. To make matters worse, cooling water leaked from the reactor, carrying dozens of radioactive isotopes. This not only posed a serious radiation hazard to personnel, but also left a troubling legacy etched into the surrounding ice, a chilling reminder of the reactor's brief but impactful run. Camp Century was shut down in 1967. The camp's reactor, the PM2A, didn't escape controversy. Found to be highly radioactive, it was dismantled and buried in an Idaho nuclear waste dump. Yet army records hint at a more troubling legacy. Radioactive cooling water from the reactor had been left buried in a sump within the Greenland ice sheet. In 2016, scientists revisiting Camp Century sounded an alarming warning. As Greenland's ice continues to melt due to climate change, the buried camp and its toxic waste, lead, fuel oil, PCBs, and possibly radiation, could resurface by 2100. This revelation sparked diplomatic tension between the US, Denmark, and Greenland. Who would bear the responsibility for cleaning up the site and addressing the potential environmental catastrophe? The question remains unanswered, casting a long shadow over Camp Century's icy legacy. However, Despite these problems, in October 1965, the U.S. Army concluded that subsurface ice camps were both feasible and practical, with nuclear power offering distinct advantages. Camp Century's legacy extends beyond Cold War history. Soil cores recovered during its operation have been invaluable in understanding Earth's ancient climate. Studied with modern techniques, these cores reveal that Greenland was once a lush, verdant region home to mastodons, forests, and diverse wildlife. During NASA's advanced radar technology, the April 2024 survey offered unprecedented clarity of Camp Century's layout. The technology, known as Uninhabited Aerial Vehicle Synthetic Aperture Radar, is designed to map the internal layers of ice sheets and the bedrock below. Camp Century remains frozen for now, but there are concerns about Greenland's melting ice potentially exposing its buried waste. For now, the rediscovery offers a fascinating glimpse into military history. It also serves as a reminder of the enduring consequences of Cold War-era activities. As scientists continue to explore the icy depths of Greenland, Camp Century reminds us of human creativity and engineering skills. It also highlights the unexpected outcomes of bold projects from the past. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.